How important is seeding for the Miami Heat in the 2024 NBA playoffs? What's up, Heat Nation? Your boy Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Hope everybody had a beautiful weekend. Hope you guys are having an amazing Monday. Before we get started, y'all, don't forget, smash the like button, click that subscribe button as well. Get your boy to 4,000 subscribers because we on the road on another Miami Heat Talk video. Now, it was a great weekend for the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat did defeat the Utah Jazz 126 to 120. My apologies for not posting anything yesterday, you guys. It was family day. I was out and about. You know, family comes first. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about it. I know you guys heard a lot about it, but this is the game where we saw the reemergence of Jimmy Himmy Butler. 37 points, 7 rebounds, dominating out there. Jimmy Butler is showing the whole world that Hemi mode is activated. Barring injury for many of these players, I see that the Miami Heat are going to be dominant moving forward. Now you get 23 points from Bam Adebayo, 14 points from Terry Rozier, 12 points from Duncan Robinson, and 8 points from Nikola Jovic with the starting lineup. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I've said before. The optimal starting lineup moving forward. Bam, Jovic, Hemi, Duncan, and Terry Rozier. We won this game by six points. Can you guys imagine how much more dominant we would have been if Tyler Hero was coming off the bench? That's exactly what I'm talking about, you guys. This is something I continue to mention and I will always continue to say moving forward. I don't think that Tyler Hero is bad for this team. I don't think that he's a bad starting player. He's perfect to have out there. But for this specific team, for this specific roster, it's more beneficial to have Tyler Hero come off the bench. Because I think Duncan Robinson plays better with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo on the floor. Duncan Robinson is not the sixth man. He's not the guy that can create always on his own. Tyler Hero is. So if you have Terry Rozier and Duncan Robinson starting in the backcourt, if any of those players sit out, who's coming in for them? Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero will bust ass on the second unit for any NBA team. So that's why I feel in the 2024 playoffs, Tyler Hero's optimal position is coming off the bench as the six man. And it's not just because he's going to have it alone. Look, at, look what Caleb Martin did out there in 23 minutes in that game against the Utah Jazz. 18 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 unbelievable block shots. The way that he changed the game defensively was amazing. Caleb Martin is that Swiss Army knife you want coming off the bench. And that's exactly why I continue to say that Nikola Jovic is the perfect option as a starting power forward position because he has the size, he has the offensive capability, and he's improving defensively, y'all. Nikola Jovic was out there for 19 minutes. He had eight points, four rebounds, two three-point shots, but he's improving defensively. That's why I like Nikola Jovic starting, not just because I think he's the best option, but because with 21 games left, if you continue to start Jovic out there, he's going to get better. How does he improve defensively? Throw him in the fire because it's working. Now, you also have somebody else contribute off the bench, Jaime Jaquez Jr. Now, I know he's not dropping 30 buckets anymore, you guys, but Jaime's our rookie and he's our role player. But last night, 29 minutes, 12 points, 4 rebounds, 5 for 10 for the field. Caleb Martin and Jaime Jaquez Jr. are incredible together coming off the bench. You got two Swiss Army knives. Now, in that bench... You had bad games by Haywood Highsmith and Orlando Robinson. I'm not going to call a bad, Smith, a bad game by Haywood Highsmith. What he does doesn't show in the box scores, but he did miss all of his four three-point shots. So it's like I've said before, you guys, the Optimals nine-man rotation moving forward, this starting lineup with Caleb Martin and Jaime Jaquez as your Swiss Army Knives coming off the bench, Tyler Hero as your main six men, and Kevin Love filling off the big man role for either Nikola Jovic or Bam Adebayo. That's our perfect nine-man rotation. You got Josh Richardson, you got DeLon Wright, and you got Haywood Highsmith to throw out there if you need help defensively. But this Miami Heat roster is incredible moving forward, you guys. Now, we got a game tomorrow against Detroit. It's like I've said before, this Miami Heat team is going to have a very great schedule moving forward. We have one of the easiest schedules moving forward, but it's like I've said before, it's any given basketball game. Anybody can win. So the Miami Heat need to treat all of these games like a playoff atmosphere game. No resting, no taking time offs, because you are fighting for seating. And that's exactly the next point that I want to get to, you guys. 
how important is seeding for the Miami Heat moving forward? Because right now the Miami Heat are at a 34 and 26. We're seventh in the Eastern Conference, tied with the Indiana Pacers for eighth. But we're in a five-way battle for the fourth seed. You got the Knicks sitting there with a 36 and 25 record, y'all. We're only a game down. A, a, excuse me, a game and a half down from the fourth seed. So the Knicks, the 76ers, the Magic, the Miami Heat, and the Indiana Pacers are all fighting for that fourth seed. What do you get with the fourth seed? You get home court advantage for the first round. Now, I've mentioned this before. Me, the optimal seeding for the Miami Heat moving forward, in my perspective, is either six, second, or third. Why? Because you are on the opposite bracket from the Boston Celtics. I've said it many times, you guys. I want Miami and Boston in a rematch for the NBA Eastern Conference Championship. Three years in a row, fourth year total with this current roster. I want it, but it is what it is if you can't get it. The last thing I want for the Miami Heat is to get seventh or eighth seed because then you're a play-in team. And we dealt with that last year. I don't want to go through that. We played two extra games last year that we didn't have to. All right, so this Miami Heat team, yes, I want to say seeding is important. And the reason why I'm cutting this video, you guys, is because a few of you did mention in the recent comments for the last video I posted, so I did want to talk about that. Because right now you're in a five-way battle for the fourth seed, but then before that, you got Cleveland in that suite of a third seed. You got Milwaukee in the second seed as well. Now, the Miami Heat right now, we are five games down from the third seed. Now, there's 22, 22 games left, I believe, in the NBA season. 22, 21 games left. Let me see. We've played 60 games, 22 games left in the season. So, being five games down from the third seed is very doable. And the fact that the Miami Heat have a very favorable matchup in March, don't be surprised by the end of March leading into April, the Miami Heat are fighting for the third seed. Do I think it's important for the Miami Heat to get good seeding? Absolutely. You don't want seventh or eighth. You don't want to fight in the play on, in the play in. Six is perfect. But what's the problem with six? You don't have home court advantage. But one thing we see from this Miami Heat squad is we're road warriors. We can win on the road. We can win on somebody else's home floor. So I ain't scared of playing on somebody else's home court. I think the Miami Heat can do it. But if you ask me, what should the Miami Heat be fighting for? That third seed. Get that third seed. Now, if you can get the fourth seed, what does that mean? If you get the fourth seed, you're fighting in the first round against the fifth seed. The winner of that bracket, of that seed, fights the first and the eighth seed. So you're possibly going to fight Boston in a second round matchup. Am I afraid of Boston? Absolutely not. I'll take Boston wherever. I'll take Boston in the first round. Hell, I don't care. But at the end of the day, it's all about the story. I'm all about the story. I want Miami and Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. How do we get that done? Sixth seed, second seed, or third seed? I think the Miami Heat can get that third seed, but the fourth seed is the most likely. With a favorable matchup, we don't know what can happen. All I know is Miami's got Detroit, we got Dallas, so we do got some winnable games coming up. So I think the Miami Heat, if we just get this stuff together, get it right, we're going to win these games. Now, Bam Adebayo was shooken up in the last game against Utah with a knee injury. He did leave the game, but he did come back. We don't know his status against Detroit. I wouldn't doubt, you know, if you give Bam Adebayo a game off against Detroit, why not? You know, the last thing you want is to hamper anybody coming towards the playoffs. Eric Spolstra did mention in a recent interview that he's not holding Tyler Hero out. He knows what Miami's fighting for, seeding right now. Because one day you can wake up and be the fourth seed. A few days later, you can wake up and be the eighth seed. You don't want the seventh or eighth seat. You want to be in the top six bracket. So in my opinion, you guys, as long as the Miami Heat gets top six, we're fine. So I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Is seating important for the Miami Heat for the 2024 playoffs? Or do y'all feel like Jimmy Butler, who recently said, it doesn't matter? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to let me know, uh, excuse me, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Help your boy grow this channel. Let me know what you think about tomorrow's game about Detroit. Do you think it's going to be a blowout or do you think Miami's going to keep it close like every other game we play? <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments, you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Until next time, your boy Ernest out.
that's enough said. Let's go heat.